folks, it's Sarah with Obadiahs, and today I want to discuss hot water options on wood cook stoves with you guys. Um, so there are basically three different types of hot water options that we have available on wood cook stoves. Um, there are water reservoirs, which are standalone tanks that do not get plumbed into anything, okay? This is an example right here. This is going to be a side reservoir. So side reservoirs are generally going to be smaller capacity than rear reservoir. Um, with the side reservoirs, you have a lid right here on the top. You pull off the lid, you pour your water in. Um, within time, it'll heat up based on the radiant heat off the rear of the stove, okay? So again, this is not plumbed into anything. It's not plumbed into the firebox, nor is it plumbed into like a sink or a toilet or anything like that. So water reservoirs do not plumb into anything. You disperse the water through a spigot located right there on the front of the tank. Um, there are also rear reservoir options available. Um, I have some other video footage that I will slip in and show you guys the rear reservoir options. This is the water reservoir on the Hiko cook stove. So water reservoir option is going to be available on the 420, the 520, and the model 2000. Um, so I wanna to talk to you a little bit about what this option is. So this is going to be a standalone water tank that mounts to the rear of the stove. It does look like these are two separate tanks, but they are actually connected here through the, through the center of the tank, right where your chimney flue would go straight up. Now this system does not plumb into anything. You fill these water tanks through the top. There is lids that go over the top so you don't get dust or anything funky inside your water. Um, you can add a spigot to the bottom of either side of the tank. So depending on what's convenient for you, you would just go ahead and add in that spigot. Um, so again, doesn't plumb into anything. The water gets hot with the radiant heat off the rear of the stove. Now this is going to be a stainless steel tank. However, manufacturers don't recommend this for potable, you know, consumable water. Reason for that is, is it's a fair amount of water, about 22 gallons. So depending on how long it's sitting in the stove, it could get stagnant and gross. Um, so that's why they don't really recommend that. But again, it's stainless steel, so you're not getting any type of pollutants into the water. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. So people ask me, what would I use this for? Um, if you are off grid, it's kind of nice to have some extra hot water. People will use it for cleaning purposes, you know, dishes, mopping the floors, possibly even bathing. Um, so that could be a really nice option. Now I do want to point out, this is going to be different than the domestic hot water coil. So the domestic hot water coil would pop out the rear of the stove. That is a plumbed in system. So it plumbs right into your domestic hot water. That means that water is going to flow to your sink, to your showers. Um, I do want to point out that these are mutually exclusive systems. So you can add one or the other or both and have them all functioning at the same time. It is important if you go with the water coil on the domestic hot water system that there's water circulating through the stove at all times. Keep in mind side reservoirs are gonna be smaller. So this one is like two gallons. Um, Pioneer stoves have some options for side water reservoirs as well. I think theirs range from like seven gallons on the Baker's Choice to 15. 15 on the Pioneer Princess. And then the rear reservoirs are gonna be usually about like 22 to 24 gallons of hot water. Now we also have what are going to be called domestic hot water systems. So domestic hot water means that there is actually a coil or a box that goes into your firebox and it plumbs out the rear of the stove. So I'm gonna show you some examples of what that looks like. Located right here, this is what we call our water jacket. A water jacket is basically going to be a loop coil that has a box built around it. The box built around it helps the unit to actually produce more BTUs into the water, and generally these systems will last longer than the standard loop coil. This is a stainless steel coil. I mean, the hardware store that sells stainless steel fittings, and you can make your own. Very simple. Nothing to it. Okay, this one's been used and been used hard. Now, 
key is the inside of that pipe. As you can see, it's a small diameter. If you have any kind of scale or minerals in your water, and the way that you tell this, if you've lived anywhere for any length of time, is lift the lid on the teapot and see what it looks like inside. It's all white and built up. That's what will happen in here. If you look at the dynamics of this, you have a very small surface area, just a tiny flat surface at any one point because it's radiused. So when it's in the fire, you know, the infrared rays are hitting basically a round shape and ricocheting. Infrared is what transfers the energy from the fire to the water. Okay, infrared is just the infrared rays. That's the heat that you feel that this absorbs. Okay, so a coil of this would be enough hot water for generally two people in a domestic water situation. With domestic hot water systems, they do need to have water in them at all times, okay? So that means once you install that water jacket into that stove, it needs to be hooked up and plumbed into water. If you fire your stove and your stove is not connected or plumbed into water, you will overfire and warp out that water jacket. So definitely keep that in mind. Domestic water systems are designed to be gravity fed hot water systems, okay? So no pump, no electricity is used to operate these systems. For it to operate and work, the water tank needs to be on the same level floor as like where the stove is located or a level above it. So you could have your cook stove on the main floor and your water tank upstairs and it'll thermo siphon because hot water rises. If your water tank was in the basement and the stove was on the main floor, it will not work. Check out the link below for more information on plumbed in domestic hot water systems. The third option is going to be hydro systems. Those are boiler systems, okay? That's like if you want to heat radiant in-floor heat or you want like a wall radiator, towel warmer in your bathroom. Um, the hydro models are unique because they do require electricity and pumps to operate. We do have other various videos that go into more depth on hydro systems. This model right here is the Vulcan. This is example of a hydro model as well. Um, this particular one isn't a cook stove with a baking oven, but I do have them available in cook stoves. So I'm just gonna swing this around really quick and show you guys the back. So this, again, this is a hydro model. This comes pre-plumbed. The water jacket fully surrounds the firebox. So basically like you would see on an outdoor boiler system or a boiler system, you know, that heats your entire house. So these are gonna be your plumbing ports, um, your pump size, zone controls, all of that stuff is going to be sold separately. Determining those factors will be calculated and used um, by your calculating your Delta T. And we do recommend that this be installed by a certified plumber. In fact, it needs to be installed by a certified plumber to maintain your warranty. So I hope that you guys found this video explanation on hot water systems helpful. If you guys like our videos, don't forget, give it a quick little thumbs up. Don't forget to click that subscribe button in the corner of the channel. If you hit that bell notification, you get all notifications of our latest videos. Please don't forget, share my videos with a friend. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a wonderful day.